Happy New Year, everybody. Today, we're gonna go over another Bay Area real estate market update. And we're gonna see if the market is still performing at a red hot pace or if it's starting to slow down. We're gonna be doing something a little bit different today. We're going to be looking at Santa Clara County, San Mateo County, San Francisco County, and Alameda County. And we're gonna be looking at both single family residences and condos, just so you can get a feel of what's performing well and what's not performing as well. And remember, this is just here for your reference and that past performance does not necessarily predict how things will perform in the future. And if you guys enjoy this video, be sure to smash like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell notification to see more videos just like this one. And before we get into the video, let me know your thoughts on how the Bay Area market is going to perform in 2021 down in the comment section below. So as always, we're gonna go onto pro.mlslistings.com where you can go inside and take a look at the actual data of the market. So we can see here all the properties that were bought and sold in the past few months. So we're gonna start with Santa Clara County and we're gonna look at residential properties. We're gonna start with our single family homes and then move on to condos and townhouses. So once we have it in here, let's check a look at the average days on market and sale to list price ratio. Okay, so we can see here that the average sale price list ratio for December was very similar to what it was in November at 1.35%. And days on market increased by just a little bit. But like we mentioned before, these are like two to three weeks for an average days on market. That's actually really, really low. And it still signifies that we're in a very hot market. As you can see from this chart here, normally in the winter months, your days on market are a lot longer and we have some seasonality because of it. But you know, due to COVID, I think things have just gone out of whack and the market is just hot even through the holiday season. So this is the exact same graph as we saw before. Let's look at the pricings by list range. So if you look at the listings by price range, we can see that the listings are still in those same peaks that we saw last month. Most of them are in the 800 to 1 million, and then we have 1.2 to 1.4 million, and then we have 2 to 3 million. If we take a look at our months of inventory, we can see here that actually there is less inventory than before. And that means that there's less properties that are coming on the market than have sold on the market. So if you look at this graph here, and we look at the actual data, we can see that we now have 0.7 months, which means that if there were no more new listings today, then it would take 0.7 months on average to sell out all of the listings that are on the MLS right now. And of course, this signifies that we're in a super hot and competitive market. Wow, so if we take a look at the number of homes for sale versus sold, this is normally what I see. I normally see that we have more actives compared to more sales, but as you can see here, we had this inversion in October. And that inversion has continued all the way through December. So in December, we had less properties actually go on the market and more properties being sold. So this is very indicative of a super hot market. So right now for single family properties in Santa Clara County, you see it. We are in a very hot market. People are buying more properties than people are putting on the market. All right, let's check out the sales prices over time. So the sales price over time has decreased just a little bit from November. If we look at the actual data, we can see that it's now gone down to 1.694 on average. So it's still an increase from last year, uh, but a slight decrease from November. So we've already seen the sales to list price ratio from the other graph. The sales by price range is going to be very similar to the listing by price range. Again, peaks in the 800 to $1 million price range, another peak in the 1.2 to 1.4, and another peak in two to 3 million. So let's look at sales volume, like what's actually being sold out there. Okay, skip that one. So if we take a look at sales volume by area, we can see what has been selling. So this time frame is from February to January. We can see that most of the homes have been selling in Morgan Hill and Gilroy, basically, you know, south of Santa Clara County. Then we have Willow Glen and Los Gatos and Sunnyvale. So these are the most liquid and, you know, they're selling the most. And all the way on the right, Milpitas and Santa Teresa are unfortunately not moving as much. But it could also be said that, you know, in Milpitas, we have a lower price point. But, you know, in general, if you want to like flip homes and have a lot of volume, stay with these areas right here on the left side. Okay, so we're going to move on to condos and townhouses now. Again, we go back to search and we adjust this filter. So now that we're selecting condos and townhouses. And let's go ahead and do it again. Hmm, interesting. So we can see here that our sale to list price ratio has been going down and we're at the, you know, 100.5%, which means that on average, 
what you list it for is what it's going to sell for. The average sales to list price ratio for single families was like 105%. So there was like a 5% uptick in your listing price. But you know, right here, it looks like, you know, what you listed for is what you're going to get. And the days on market for these condos are also increasing. So they're sitting on the market a little bit longer. So this just goes to show that condos and townhouses aren't performing as well as SFRs. And right now it's taking about a month to sell your property if it's a condo or townhouse. So if we look at the listings by price range, we can see that a majority of them are grouped over here. We have 400 to 600,000, 600 to 800,000, and you know, 800 to 1 million dollars. And we have a small peak right here in 1.2 to 1.4 range. So let's take a look at our months of inventory. Okay, so our months of inventory isn't as bad as I thought. It seems like once COVID hit, you know, in April and May, then no condos were moving. People just weren't buying them. We had like, you know, 3.8 months of inventory. But right now it's reasonable. Uh, I guess right here it says 1.2 months of inventory. So not too bad. I guess, you know, I would say the condo market is lukewarm and if you want to get a relatively good deal, maybe now's the time to buy a condo or townhouse in Santa Clara County. So if we look at the number of homes that are for sale versus for sold, yeah, as you can see here, this is pretty normal where you have more actives than you have sold properties. Yeah, it's not too bad compared to this one right here where you had so many properties that were active and only a little bit that were sold. Yeah, I guess it's like mediocre. And if you want to sell your condo, now could be a good time to sell it. But you're not going to get these crazy high prices and premium that the single families are getting right now. Okay, checking out sales price over time. It looks like on average, we're getting 900,000 for a condo in the Santa Clara County. And which is a little bit less than what we were getting in November. But overall, pretty flat. So if you look at sales by price range, it should be very similar to listings by price range. Again, the three peaks here. And let's look at sales volume by area. Who is selling condos? Sunnyvale and Santa Clara. These are the ones who are producing a lot of volume. Again, sales volume by area means what is the dollar value of all the condos that are sold in this area based on the time frame. So this time frame is from February to January of this year. And Alum Rock and Rengsdorf, they're not selling that much. Lopitas surprisingly has a decent amount of condos here being sold. All right, so let's move on to San Mateo County. So let's do this again. Go to San Mateo County, look at single family houses. Let's look at the average days on market and sell to list price ratio. Okay, um, I guess similar to what we had before where San Mateo County's days on market isn't as hot as the ones are in Santa Clara County. So, so properties in San Mateo County are put on the market and lasting a little bit longer. And your sell to list price ratio is only at 102% versus what we saw in Santa Clara County at 105%. So let's take a look at the listings by price range. Obviously San Mateo County is more affluent than Santa Clara County on average. So we have more of our peak on the right side at you know two to three million dollars. If we look at how long properties are selling for, months of inventory here, 0.8, not too bad. I think in general, if you have under one month of inventory, that's already signifying that you're in a pretty good market. Okay, so if we look at the chart for number of homes for sale versus for sold, cool, we had that little inversion here. We had more properties that were being sold versus the ones that are being put on the market. So if we take a look at the sale prices over time, we do see a small dip in the prices that are being sold. So on average, Santa Clara County is decreasing a little bit. So it was really hot in August of this year at 2.2 million, maybe even 2.3 million. Now it's decreased to 1.85 million. Actually, you know what? Let's not use this last number. Now it's decreased to $2 million. I don't even really want to use this last number here because January just started and this number isn't reflective of how the market is doing in general. This is probably only taken from a few listings that were sold. So if we look at the sales volume by area here, we can see that most of the sales came from Redwood City and then San Mateo and then Menlo Park. So again, if you guys want to do flipping, these are the great cities to do because there's a lot of transactions happening in these cities. Surprisingly, East Palo Alto isn't doing as well as I thought, but again, that could be because the prices in East Palo Alto aren't as high as the other properties in San Mateo County. All right, so let's move on to condos and townhouses.
Wow, so if you look at condos and townhouses in San Mateo County, there is, um, you know, the market isn't doing so well in this area. So you can tell this because the average days on market is now 40 for how long they sit on the market and the average sales to list price ratio has gone down a lot. So these are under 100%. So if you list it, then you can expect to get a little bit less than what you listed for, 99.5%. You know, this tells me that if you have a condo in this area, and if you can afford to hold on to it, then just hold on to it and don't sell. Otherwise, you might have to list it really, really low to get a lot of attention to then have people come by and overbid on your property. Otherwise, it's gonna sit there and then you know be stuck like this. And you know, I think the most frustrating thing about this is that you could own a condo in you know a nice area like Redwood City or San Mateo, and it could just sit there when you have friends or neighbors who are selling their condos or townhouses just a few cities away in Santa Clara County and they're selling like hotcakes. So, I mean, that's just how it is and um, it's pretty unfortunate. Okay, so if you take a look at the listings by price range, we can see that a majority of the condos are actually you know lower than I thought. Uh, most of the condos here are in the 600 to $800,000 price point or you know 800 to $1 million price point. And then we have a few in the 1.2 to 1.4 million dollar price point. Yeah, it's surprising to me. I thought condos and townhouses in San Mateo County would be more towards the right. So if we take a look at the months of inventory. You can see here that there was a giant peak in April because of COVID and then it dropped. But still not too bad. 1.4 months isn't too bad. So let's take a look at number of houses for sale for sold. Then you can see here that there are more that are active on the market than are actually being sold. Let's take a look at sales prices over time. Okay, you can see that the condo prices are actually decreasing a little bit here as well. So at its peak, we're at you know 1.05 million, and now we're down to you know 918. So again, if you can afford it, don't put your condos on the market right now. And if we look at sales by price range, we're gonna see a similar graph as before. Let's look at the sales volume by area. Okay, so if we look at the cities that sold the most condos, San Mateo and Foster City and San Carlos. Uh, you know, on the bottom trend, we have Redwood City and the very bottom, Atherton. I mean, are there even condos in Atherton? I don't even know. Again, surprising that there aren't that many condos that are being sold in East Palo Alto. You know, I would think that that's where most of the properties would be being sold, but you know, guess not. All right, so now let's move on to San Francisco County. And we're gonna take a look at the single family homes. Wow, so San Francisco County is very erratic here. You can see that at one point, properties were selling for way above their listing price, 1.11%. So you would get an 11% premium for listing your property in San Francisco in March of last year. But now that premium has decreased, but it's not that bad. We're at 106%. So if you list a property for a million dollars, you can expect to get $1,060,000 from this property. The average days on market was very strange as well too. Like properties were selling instantly and then slowly but surely they just stayed on the market until November where they stay on for 40 days on average. Now it's dropped down to 29 days on average, but still the San Francisco market is a lot slower than we have in Santa Clara County. So we take a look at the listings. You can see that you have a peak here at 800 to $1 million, then at 1.2 to 1.4, and then at 2 million to 3 million. Take a look at the months of inventory. And wow, you can see that properties are actually going pretty quickly because we only have one month of inventory in San Francisco. So let's take a look at the number of homes for sale and for sold. And a lot of properties were being listed, but not so many sold. So this is actually pretty crazy to me. You know, one thing I want to note as well, we're using MLS listings who mostly focus on Santa Clara County and San Mateo County. So the data that's presented here may not be representative of the entire San Francisco County data set. Again, for that, you need a separate MLS login. And I know it's a very antiquated system, but this is what we have. And even if this is a small subset of what we have, it's a small representation of how everything is working in general as well. Because I don't believe that there's only been, you know, 91 new listings and 21 sold in all of San Francisco County in the month of October. The, something seems wrong here. So if you take a look at sales prices over time, we can see that it's been relatively flat, but still a little bit of a dip from November of last year. If we take a look at the dip, 
yeah, we went from 1.46 to 1.38, so. Nothing too major here. And if you take a look at the sales by price range, yeah, same peaks. Okay, sales volume by area. I don't know the San Francisco area very well because I don't go there that often. But you can see here that there are all these different like little parts of San Francisco and how they sell. So I guess if you want to flip houses, then go to Portola or Outer Parkside. Excelsior, I know Excelsior is a very expensive, rich neighborhood. So try to stay in these areas. All right, let's move on to condos and townhouses. And this is the one I'm most interested in because I've heard a lot of stories about how the SF market has been performing for condos and townhouses last year. Wow, this is crazy. I don't think I've ever seen something that, that crazy. But look, condos in SF are now taking 49 days to sell on average. And the sale to list price ratio is under 100%. So if you list a property, expect to sell it for less than what you're listing for. And expect to have it sit on the market for almost two months. This tells me that it's really not a good time to sell in SF, if you can help it. If you take a look at the listings by price range, there's a big peak at 600 to 800K, and another peak at 800 to 1,000. Not too bad, honestly. Like, if you can get a condo for 600 to 800K in SF, I would take it. If we look at the months of inventory, we can see that. What is this? 20 months of inventory? I think this might be, again, a typo or a, a bug because of the awkward subset, but just seems like that doesn't seem right. And on average right now, it takes 6.7 months to sell the inventory. Again, that's telling me that properties are not moving in SF. Wow, look at this. So all these properties are being put on the market and only this many are being sold. Again, I think this is just a subset of the actual data, but maybe the ratios are correct where properties just aren't moving in SF. So if you look at the sales price over time, I guess in May, everything took a big hit down to 600K. And now we're trending a little bit downwards at 900K. So this is you know not what you wanna see when you wanna put your property on the market. So let's look at the sales volume by area. Okay, so, you know, Russian Hill, South Beach, and Mission Bay. For what it's worth, honestly, I would just stay away from the SF condo market right now. If you plan on selling your condo, try your best to not list it. And if you do list it, and your property sits on the market for a very long time, don't, don't blame your agent. It's just the market right now. Okay, so finally, let's go into Alameda County and take a look at their stats. So again, MLS listings does not cover Alameda County normally, so this data might just be a subset of the actual data. We'll take a look at single family homes first. So in Alameda County, uh, most of our days on market, you know what, this is unfortunate because this peak right here, again, is from a buggy data set from before. So if we take a look here, what we actually have, we have a pretty healthy market. Properties are selling for 16 days. That's even better than what we had in Santa Clara County. And if we look at the actual data set, we can see that, what the hell is this, 121%? So right now, if you wanna flip homes, this is the place to be. Alameda County, you can get 121% of your list on average, that's nuts. Again, this may be faulty data, so this might be more in line, like 10% premium on your listing. So if you list something for 500K, it'll sell for 550 on average. So we take a look at the listings by price range. We can see that most of the houses here are being sold from 600 to 800 and 800 to a million dollars with a small peak at 1.2 to 1.4. Take a look at the months of inventory and wow, you can see that it's just going straight down. And in December, we were down to 0.4 months. So it takes 0.4 months to sell all the inventory in Alameda County. Oh my God. So look, take a look at this. These are the properties that are being put on the market. And then these are the properties that are being sold. So boom, 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 boom. All these houses are being sold. And yet these are only the properties that are being put on the market. So there is less inventory than there are buyers who are buying properties in the East Bay. And I think it's because people are moving out of these expensive neighborhoods 
and living in these nice larger homes in the East Bay because why not? Like you're only an hour or so from work. You don't even have to go in the office. You might as well enjoy your time during quarantine and enjoy your large backyard space with a pool, you know, with your home, with your friends and not have to worry about living in a small cramped space. This is amazing. And I think again, if you are planning to do any work, get into the single family market for Alameda County. So we take a look at sales price over time. There is a huge spike in December of 2020. Don't look at this right now because we're in the very early stages of January. But wow, like this is amazing. Prices have jumped up quite a bit from you know 1.15 to 1.32. If we take a look at our sales volume by area, we can see that Fremont is where it's at. That's where all the properties are being sold. And then we have Pleasanton, Livermore, Hayward. So if you're gonna flip houses and you wanna have your property sell quickly, buy in these areas. All right, so finally, we're gonna take a look at Alameda County's condos and townhouses. Okay, so wow, even the condos in Alameda County are actually doing okay. The sales to list price ratio is above 100, which is good. And right now the average days on market are kind of on par with what we had in Santa Clara County. If we take a look at what the listings are, they're between 400 to 600, 600 to 800, and 800 to 1 million. All right, looking at months of inventory, we can take a look and see that we have just one month. So these are pretty liquid. I guess these condos and townhouses in Alameda County are still doing pretty well. And I think these condos and townhouses are doing better than the ones in San Francisco County is because even though they're smaller relative to a single family home, they're still very, very affordable. Whereas the ones in SF were pricier. And why would you pay so much to live in a place that's, you know, quote unquote, pretty disgusting and when you don't even need to live there. So you might as well pay less and live in a starter home in Alameda County. So you look at the number of sale versus sold. Yeah, there was a lot of inventory earlier this year, but towards the end of the year, there was less actives and the number that were being sold was still pretty good. You know, still in line with what we had out. Not like what we saw in the SF County, where there were just so many new actives and so little that are actually being sold. Prices have been flat over time. It's pretty much the same throughout. So no real spikes, no real dips. And let's go to sales volume by area. Again, most of the volume is being done in Fremont, but here Dublin and Hayward are the second leaders. So that was our Bay Area market update for January of 2021. I honestly learned a lot and I was actually very surprised at how bad some of these markets were. And again, my heart goes out to those home sellers who are trying to put their properties on the market, but they are being kind of left behind. And I think it's because of COVID. You know, with COVID, it is really easy to look at properties because you can take your virtual tours from home, but there are properties that just sit on the market for days and weeks and months and they get no attention. And unfortunately, the market is just not kind to some of the condo owners in San Mateo County and San Francisco County. But if you want to flip houses or if you want to sell your home in Alameda County, now's the time to do it because they are getting a huge premium on their properties. So I hope you guys all enjoyed this video. If you did, please smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell notification to see more videos just like this one. And let me know your thoughts about how the Bay Area market is performing down in the comment section below. Thanks for watching, guys. And I'll see you next time. Take care.